Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Luang Prabang, Lao. This, it's a heritage city, it's absolutely gorgeous, but they're also known for their food here. And one of the best places to eat is within the markets. So today, I'm gonna take you on a Luang Prabang market street food tour. We're gonna eat some, some amazing food, and I'm gonna share it all with you in this video right now. Okay, we just arrived to the morning market. I've, I've never seen it cooked this way, but she has uh, beehives, she has honey, and then she's grilling up the larva, which, which is still within the hive. She's grilling it in banana leaves, and it's just like a little, a little bee larva, bee worm snack. At first I thought you could just eat the larva, but she said you can eat the entire hive. I've never had the hive before, but the larva is stuffed within this hive, and then just roasted in a banana leaf. Wow, this is this is just very very fascinating. Oh wow! Oh, that is that is awesome. Mm, those larvae. They just burst with juice, with this slight honey sweetness, and then they're all wrapped up within that, within that hive. The entire thing is like way juicier than I had imagined. Mm. And you can taste like it does have sort of a that slight like proteiny beef flavor to it. It's kind of like chewy scrambled eggs with a honey flavor. That's just like that's just like the pure thing. Wow, that's that is incredibly delicious. I am I'm amazed. Yeah, beehive that, yeah, that protein. Was fresh. Beehive protein. Just eating the comb. But yeah. with the larva still in there, it was so juicy. <laughs> One of the great things about this market is that people come from this entire region. They come from the village. Uh, they come from this surrounding area and bring what they find. So you'll find all sorts of things from the jungle, including herbs and vegetables, but also fish and meat. Uh, there's a, a real just variety of different ingredients and it's it's such a colorful such a vibrant atmosphere and at the same time it's calm and friendly I just noticed after finishing that beehive I feel my teeth have like a little wax on them it feels like I think it's beeswax so by the so it's sticky rice powder but The actual name of this is called Kanom Jog. It is a yellow mung bean, kind of almost like cupcake, almost muffin shape. And what he does is he takes this little like handheld shape, which I, I think is totally custom. Uh, and then he adds on some sticky rice flour, which is made into a, a batter, like a pancake batter. That holds it all together, drops it in the oil, it deep fries, but he keeps that, he keeps that like muffin shape form on it in the oil so that it holds its shape. This is another delicious looking morning treat. Oh, the steam. Mm, oh, I'm on. Oh, Joel. Taste that, dude. I see how hot. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason it's so good is because it's so fresh. These are right out of the hot oil. But that has like a like a creamy potato textured feeling on the inside, but then ultra crispy on the outside. And maybe the seasoning on the inside is maybe just a little bit of salt and pepper. It's very light on the seasoning, but it's just all about that deep frying process and that combination. That's like a flaming hockey puck, breathing steam with every bite. Fantastic. Okay, the next snack, and this is this is a type of nam, which is a it's a fermented pork treat. 
uh, but this is kind of in like a loaf form. You can see the texture on that. You can see the pieces of skin. There's some meat, there's fat mixed in, um, and then there's chilies on the side, and then she slices you a, a piece of the cake. You see, it, it's just, everything is just kind of held together by fat and, and gelatin and the, yeah, gel, probably the gelatin and the um, collagen. Everything's held together by collagen. Okay. Mm. Oh. Okay. This is one of those things that doesn't look all. It, mm -hmm. I, I, it honestly doesn't look all that attractive. It's like translucent fat and and juices and skin mingled together. A lot of skin. But, wow, that's flavorful. Yeah. Oh, it's so garlicky. Mm -hmm. It's nice and sour. You can taste that fermented factor, and then. The texture is so soft, slightly jelly-ish. You've got a little bit of gelatinous skin in there, but it's all really, really tender. Sablai. Mm. That's definitely a little jiggly, but it is so flavorful. I feel like I've had my full dose of collagen for the day. We can continue walking around now. Oh, there we go. As you keep walking around this market, you'll just start to notice more and more unique and fascinating ingredients. Uh, and the people, one, one thing that stands out is that the people are so nice and so friendly. Uh, you'll find all sorts of fish from the Mekong. You'll find herbs, foraged herbs. Uh, there are all sorts of different mushrooms and fungus. There's ant larvas of a variety of ants. There's bats, there's rats, there's chickens, there's jungle birds, there's jungle meat. This yet. <laughs> yeah, the, the black one. <laughs> Next up, we are trying something. It's called khao chi. And this is, it's a very, very common street food snack that you will find all over this region of the world. It's sticky rice, uh, which is molded into a kind of almost popsicle shape, dipped in egg and then grilled over coals. Oh yeah. Okay. It is all about that, that namjum, that, that gel. The flavor is really coming from that, that sauce. It tastes like a dried, smoky fish flavor. There's chilies in it, it's a little bit spicy. And then the, the whole rice, the khao chi is actually kind of, it, it's kind of, um, it's glutinous because it's sticky rice. You've got that egg coating, it's got that smoky egg flavor. That's just a, a carb, delicious snack in the morning. When a vendor is snacking on his own product in the morning, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah. Sap, sap lai. Sap lai. Sap lai. Yeah. Five years. Five years making it. Hello. Sap, sap lai. The gel, gel sap. Yeah. That's, I've, I mean, I've had this quite a few times before. But sometimes it's usually kind of, I mean, it's usually kind of plain. Not always my favorite. His is amazing, and that chili sauce makes it. Okay. Okay. What a friendly, bubbly man he was. This is one of those things that you could just sit here and sit and bathe in the steam and watch her making it all day long. Uh, she puts on a batter onto, it's, it's, this is just like a steamed cheesecloth. Uh, she flattens it out and it steams until, uh, until it turns into a noodle. Uh, then she takes it off, she, she puts it onto her, her chopping board there. She adds in a mixture of minced meat, there are some green onions in there, and probably just some mild spices. Uh, then she rolls them up into fresh, so they're, they're fresh noodle rolls. A lot of people are just ordering it to go, uh, but 
if you order to eat here, she will sprinkle on some crispy shallots and serve it with a sauce that I think is mostly fish sauce with a, a sprinkle of lime in it. I'm sure the majority of it seems like all of it. Sap. Sap. Oh, man. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Fresh. Yeah, you really notice the freshness of the the, the fresh noodle that she makes, mm. and it's so soft and so like silky smooth that that noodle batter. You've got the just a little bit of minced meat in there with the onions. It's salty. The freshness of it and the softness, silkiness of it is what stands out. Sorry, I had to take another bite immediately. It's so <laughs> awesome. That's one of those things that just goes down so easily. Because it's so soft and supple. For our final meal this morning, we're stopping at a stall here. It's in the back of the fish stall and we're gonna eat some khao piak sen. Khao piak sen is a popular Lao noodle dish. The noodles, a combination of rice and tapioca starch, are thick and hearty. The noodles are first blanched in hot water, the pork sliced right off the bone, and in goes a handful of raw herbs, followed by boiled watercress. There's just nothing quite like the satisfaction of having a hot bowl of noodles in the morning for breakfast. This just looks spectacular. And you always do want to taste the broth before you do anything, before you add any seasoning yourself. Oh wow, the broth is almost kind of like, it's not like a like a pure liquid, it's kind of a little bit thickened. Oh yeah, come to think of it, she did cook the noodles in the soup. And then normal, normally often they would cook separately so that you get that, um, the starch, so that the starch is separate, but she cooks it within the, so you get that starch, that's probably what thickens the, the broth, but that's, that's on purpose. Oh yeah, that's a, a meaty pork stock. But yeah, it is slightly thickened, so it's more like a gravy, so it coats all of the ingredients. And this roasted chili oil looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna add a little bit of this and maybe a, a little bit more for good measure. Swirl that around. Oh man, and there are also some fresh chilies here too, uh, but I will, I think I'll chase with the fresh chilies. Okay, get my chopsticks going. Uh, you can see the thickness of the broth now, That's, and it just sort of glistens and coats the noodles, but these are fresh noodles. vegetable taste like watercress. Mm. And then, okay, with that, that, that chili oil, all that, that enhances it a next level. Oh, it's so good. That broth, that broth is fantastic. It's so soothing. These little green chilies are one of the joys of Lao, eating in Lao. They're, I mean, if you, if you keep on eating them, they do get spicy, but they're so flavorful. Um, that crunch, they're like explosive green beans. Okay, we just experienced just snack after snack, bowl after bowl of extreme delicious, fresh cooked food, vendor after vendor. They're, they're so nice here, they're so friendly. Uh, yeah, this is a place, especially if you love local culture, Street food snacks, this is a place you're, you need to come.
It's the middle of the morning now and to continue this Lao street food tour of the markets of Luang Prabang, we are walking over to Talat Po Si, which is, it's the biggest fresh market in Luang Prabang. I'm not sure what we're gonna discover there, but we're gonna walk around and find out. You're greeted at the entrance with a parking lot of tuk-tuks. <laughs> We're on the hunt. We're gonna walk around and try to find food that you would eat with sticky rice. So some of the stews, some of the jails, some of those dips, uh, because we've already eaten noodles. We've already eaten quite a few snacks this morning. So we're on the hunt for sticky rice now. And if you step onto the inside of the market, immediately it turns to utensils, to clothes, to shoes. And so I think, I think this is just a market where you can buy any, anything you're possibly looking for, from kids' toys, to mops, to dolls, to sandals, to eggs, and the latest in backpack fashion. We're just walking just outside of the market when there's a place that we could not walk past without buying one. She's serving Sai Pua, which is the Luang Prabang style sausage. She has the fan blowing onto the grill, onto the sausage, which is in turn blowing the smoke towards the road. And everyone who passes by, it, 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 it's impossible not to stop. You will not pass by her sausage stall. It's a mechanic motorbike shop, but she just sells what is definitely homemade Sai Ua. Uh, right in front of the mechanic shop. Okay, I can't wait to try it. Look at that sausage of beauty. It's just loaded with, uh, you can see green onions. I think you can see some dill in there, some cilantro. Mm. Then the meat, um, lemongrass. Oh, oh, that's hands down the best Sai Ua I think I've ever had. All oh, the herb content will blow you away. The lemongrass in there, oh wow. You can taste just the faint hint of chilies. It's salty, it's meaty. It doesn't taste that fatty. Um, oh, that's good. Maybe some dill in there. The greasy awesomeness of the meat, but then the herbal content, what a recipe. That is just blowing us away. Not only is this one of those sausages that was impossible to pass by, this is one of those sausages that after you eat one, it's impossible not to order another one. So I did just ask, she makes it fresh herself. Yeah. Uh, that, that's some of the best sausage I've ever had anywhere in the world, ever. Under an umbrella, across the street from a gas station, just down the road from the market, we found the lunch we were searching for. A point and choose haven of Lao stews and sticky rice. Tom Chiao Pa. Tom Chiao Pa. Ah. Yeah, okay, hang on. Oh, hello, what do I got? Be careful, it feels like it's gonna break. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Nam oi, eh? Nam oi. Wow. Sugar cane juice. Oh, oh, that is really good. Sweet, but really refreshing because it's hot. All the dishes are up at the front over there. You choose, you pick and choose whatever you want. There's a couple of different dishes, a couple dishes that I wanted to try, and then a couple dishes that were kind of low at the bottom of the pan, so you know they're good. You know they're the top choices. It looks fantastic. We've got a mound of sticky rice. We've got some jail, a, a chili dip. This dish is called off bone. There's pork in here, some big chunks of pork fat, and then that's, whoa, that thing is hard. That's something hard in there. Oh, that's like an olive seed. Oh, oh is that Lao olive in there? Makok. Makok, yeah. Yes, okay, um, there's pork in here, and then that's like a, it look, it's, it's like a very green, green looking stew. As you pick up a spoon of this, you can smell the sourness, which I think is coming from that Lao olive. Mm. Oh, that's like a, a disintegrating garden in your mouth. 
there's dill in there, and I, I think as well. It has this wonderful acidic component to it that tastes more like a more like a pickle almost, rather than like lime juice. Mm. Bone. Yo, that's really, really remarkably good. It's a little bit spicy. There are chilies in there for sure. The next dish is called pop balin, and this is definitely a Mekong River fish or freshwater fish. Kind of look, you can see that like blubber on the outside, catfishy type of fish. There are some innards in here. Oh, those, those innards are sprouting. But again, this is like a fish stew. You can see the fish oil on top of there, and then the herbs. The cilantro comes in. The yeah, this looks this looks delicious. And look, we got some belly here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's like really good like it looks. I think they've done a great job to sort of mask the fishiness of the freshwater fish. It doesn't, it doesn't really taste muddy at all when it's wrapped up in those herbs. They do fish soup well here. This is, this is but more than a soup. It's like a stew, like a fish stew. Bone. And she said it's called Jeo Nam Park, which is, it's, there's some type of vegetable that's like roasted down in there, along with the roasted chilies. You can see a little bit of herbs in there. Uh, this is this is this was made for sticky rice. Oh. <laughs> a piece of sticky rice just fell out of my mouth. Oh, that's oh, that's wonderful. Oh, the dry chili flavor is like it's exaggerated in there, but then it has this really extreme saltiness that's just awesomely awesomely good yeah that goes so well with sticky rice the next dish is called soup pak and it's a mix of vegetables you can see the the peas like like they look like snow peas in here mm -hmm. um you can see they look like sesame seeds as well it looks kind of tangly and tangly and delicious i gotta get one of those beans mini mini yeah. garden oh, man. in each spoon that is okay Another amazing dish. I think those are sesame seeds. And the mix of vegetables here is also very key uh, because you've got those peas which are a little bit slimy. You've got that, that green vegetable which has a crunch to it. And then yeah, it, it's just all completely wrapped up in that really smoky, nutty, roasted flavor, which is that dressing. That is impressively delicious. It's so good. That's so good and unlike anything else I've had in Southeast Asia. We, we had to try this because this is a very well-known Luang Prabang style dish. It's called Ot Lam. Oh, there's pork innards too? Mm -hmm. Excellent, this is just like all things pig, pig plus herb. And kind of a, I'll it does take, look a little bit slimy. I'll take that morsel right there. To be honest, out of all the dishes, that one is the most mellow. Um, it, uh, it's wrapped up in a slightly, slightly slimy gravy, but that, that's not off-putting at all. The, the texture is really good. Um, what comes in nicely to me is first the lemongrass paired with the dill, and with the texture of that gravy, that makes it perfect for scooping up with sticky rice. All the dishes we've tried here, they're, they're all incredibly good. They're all so different in flavor and herb composition, but I think the abon, that might be my favorite. The green flavor of that is undeniable, but that lemongrass shines. As we were sitting here eating, they, they, they were selling a lot of takeaways, so Three out of the six dishes are gone now. You can see the empty places where they're sitting over charcoal, they're gone. We got here just in time to experience this food and it was sensationally delicious. And everything we ordered, it, it, per dish, it's only 5,000 kip. Uh, so our entire meal, and they gave us like three kilos of sticky rice for, to just, a, to a, just, just complimentary to go with the, the food. So they're really nice. This is right along, where are we here? We are right along the side of the road. There's a 
a petrol lao across the street and about I'd say about one and a half kilometers down that way is the main historical center of Luang Prabang. I'm I'm so happy, so satisfied. We need to take a rest now this afternoon. We're on our way back to the Heritage Center, back to the hotel. We're gonna take a little rest this afternoon and also wait out the hot sun and, and we will do some more eating later on this evening. How are you feeling? Wow. I'm a little bit spacey right now. <laughs> I'm just gliding around. What a, what a meal. We had a fantastic rest this afternoon and managed to stay away from most of the blazing hot sun this afternoon. We're on our way back to the market now and we're going to the night market. There's a food market right, right in the, very close to the center heritage old town of Luang Prabang. And we're gonna go search out some more street food for dinner tonight. And as soon as you enter into this narrow alley, this passageway, you can just smell the, the smoke wafting through, the, through this place. There, there you, you get grilled sausage, you get grilled chicken, there's grilled fish. She is cooking something amazing looking over there. Right now it's a little bit quiet because we wanted to show up early uh, to get the, the first selection of the food. They have tables where you can sit. Uh, there's there's quite, a, quite a lot of food packed within this alley. We're gonna get a fish and then we're gonna go down the alley and sit at the, the curry stall because there, there are a couple more dishes I wanna try there and then eat it all together. He has a selection of different fish including there's some catfish there, there's some uh, tilapia, but I was really more interested in trying some of the the river Mekong fish. So he has a, a, a little selection of river Mekong fish. We got we got one of them. Those are definitely some of the fish that we saw this morning at the market. We're gonna take that fish, go down to the end of the 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 lane, and there's a stall that I want to order a few more dishes from. <laughs> They don't normally serve food at this stall for you to eat here. Everyone that's coming here is all taking away. Uh, but they, they've been really nice to us. They, they went into their house because they actually, this is their house right here. This is where they cook the food and then they serve it right outside of their house. They went into their house, they got bowls. Uh, they serve it di to uh, the food to us, the order the dishes that we ordered in bowls, and they brought it across the lane here to this table that's kind of randomly sitting here within the alley and next to the convenience shop. And they have, yeah, they've graciously hooked us up, and their food looks looks stunning. One more very nice gesture is that since they don't actually cater, they don't actually have a restaurant. They, you don't actually sit down at this stall. They went into their house and they brought us out their, their own personal um, sticky rice basket. Uh, this is just out of their home, so this is what they use and they're letting us use it. So that's yet, another, yet again another genuine gesture of welcome and kindness. This one is called Lap Thai and this is a, this is a, a green algae uh, that comes from the river or some kind of seaweed. Um, but it's it, when she scooped it into the bowl, you could just see it kind of like how, how sticky the texture is. And even in the bowl, it kind of just sloshes, sloshes around. Joel? <laughs> oh yeah, that, that looks like... I can't wait to get like, into this. It, it, oh, that's like a... You can't tell that. if it's a puree or a, or a gravy. I bet But you... look at that texture. Yeah. I mean, it's like, whoa, whoa, it'll slide. It just slid right off my spoon, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But you can also see it's not just that. There is some coriander mixed in. There is some, maybe some eggplant particles. Uh, yeah, I, I have no idea even what to expect. Cheers, man. First bite of another awesome meal. Mmm. 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 Okay. The texture is a little unique. Um, it is both slimy, mm. it has some kind of a like, like, some kind of a dimension of crispness to it. Kind of like oniony in flavor, mm. maybe garlicky. 
you taste, I do see some sesame seeds in there. You can taste the smoky, nutty sesame seed flavor. It, it, it sort of has a spinachy component to it. It's in the mouth. It's amazing. Yeah. Don't be put off by the look of this. It's, it deserves an order. For sure. I think, I think it's coconut milk. There's uh, shreds of chicken in here. There looks like there's some minced meat in there too. Um, and then kind of a, a red chili oil sauce. So get a little bit of everything in one bite. Here. Mm. Yeah, Oh, that's, that is again, delicious food. The onions in there, it tastes like tomato stewed minced pork with shreds of chicken in it, then wrapped up in a very light coconut milk sauce, almost soupy, soupy coconut milk. That is, that is insanely good. The next one is called Mok Kai Dok Ke, and this is, it was, it was steamed in a banana leaf and then she, they, they emptied it onto a plate when we ordered it, but there should be some egg in here. Mm. Oh, the dill. That's kind of like a, mm. like a dry scrambled egg, but juicy at the same time. And then just loaded with dill. This one is jail macaque, which includes the Lao olive in it. Mm. Oh. Oh, that tastes like bacon almost. <laughs> Aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It's not as like sour or acidic as I thought it was going to be from that olive. Mm -hmm. That's nicely greased. Yeah, they, that Delicious. could be the bacon flavor coming from possibly pork fat lard within that nam Okay, the next dish is opala, and the the like the different textures and chunky things going on in this dish is enough to impress you. And we saw it up there, we had to order it. You can see lemongrass in there. You can, there, there's like a copious amount of chilies floating around in there too. Mm. Okay. That one's a winner. Oh, that's, that's one of those, mm. like entire mouthful, like maximizing every single taste bud in your mouth kind of dishes. We've been so enthralled in the dishes that we haven't even, we, we almost forgot about the fish, but no, we haven't forgotten about the fish. It's time to dig into the fish now. One thing that's worth mentioning is that Laos is a landlocked country, so all fish that you get, which are local, are fresh water. <laughs> mm. yeah. mm. That's really good. Mm. Mm. The texture of it is kind of like, it is a little mushy, but in a good kind of way. That's delicious. It would be good with some of the, some of the jails to go on top, but that's good on its own. That was another outstanding meal. I, I'm blown away by those, the variety of those dishes and the different ingredients involved and even the textures and the, and the herb compounds of all those dishes. And today has been an absolute outstanding day of food in Luang Prabang. And Luang Prabang is known for its history. It's known as being a heritage city. And I, I think the best reason to come here is for the food. Okay, so that's it for this video. I wanna say a huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click that little bell icon. Uh, that way you'll get notified of the future videos that I publish. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video.